that is up. Okay. Uh, so uh, I, these are different pain specialists. Uh, this is Dr. Shubhra Torai. He yeah. also had something to say. Dr. Subrata Goswami and Dr. Amapati Sanya. Uh, I'm sorry I could not show you all the videos due to the time constraint. But um, uh, I think that now the upcoming pain physicians, they will be ready to start their practice with a new hope and see and uh, not be restricted by budgetary constraints because you can really start a pain clinic in an office-based setup if you are keen to do so. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Manisha, for a very nice uh, talk on the office-based anesthesia. The second speaker of today is Dr. Sunil Vagmani. He doesn't require much of uh, introduction. He is uh, one of the celebrity paid physicians of Bombay. And, <laughs> and he's, uh, he's got a background of uh, re interventional radiology. And uh, he's one of the pioneering person who does a lot of uh, endoscopic discectomies. This time, uh, we missed you for the workshop. He's got a brilliant pair of hands. And uh, he would be speaking on ultrasound, use of ultrasound in his paid practice. Basic use. Basic use, yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. is the basics of ultrasound? Yeah, yeah. Dr. Sarin. Uh, thank you, Dr. Abhijit Paul, uh, for the introduction. And uh, I welcome all the friends about. Uh, today I'll be speaking on uh, basics of USG. I'm an interventional radiologist, so when I started pain management practice, frankly speaking, we were doing ultrasound guided interventions anyways during our residence days. The issue comes to the point where if you want to avoid harmful radiation, is ultrasound a solution? But many speakers speak on, can you get it? We, we, we learn the basics of ultrasound in terms of physics first, then application of the ultrasound. But I think for learned people like pain physicians, what is more important is first to understand the basic machine, how to optimize the image, and then utilize it for pain management. Going into the details of physics of ultrasound is not going to help you that much in your practice. Because anyways, that is the theoretical part. So today I'll be talking more about how to know your ultrasound machine. So knowing USG machine, that means that you have to know the basics of the ultrasound machine. I'll touch upon few final points upon the probe, the physics of the probe, and the crystal technology and all this stuff. Uh, so I'll start my talk with first. There is this is a battery we face every day. You know, technology, technology, and uh, we are using various uh, diagnostic modalities for interventional purposes. So the battery we all face will go on forever. But why study ultrasound? I'll tell you, today it is going to become a bread and butter practice as an office based pain clinic. Because for other purposes you require big CRM, OT and all the stuff. But for simply performing ultrasound guided interventions, what you require is a table, an ultrasound machine, an air conditioner, the physician and the, search, uh, and the patient. And basic tools like uh, all your needles, uh, drugs, that's it. And this is all, this all started in 1880 with the, the demonstration of piezoelectric effect by Professor Pyle Curie and uh, later on with several other investigations. And the first machine was actually used for cancer detection. So ultrasonic light, you know, finding uh, deep sea explorers uh, or finding parts of the ship or something somewhere beneath the seabed. So this was used for cancer detection. And later on, the machine undergone has undergone a lot of transformations with you know display capability, the scanner, the the CPU, the computer processing unit, okay, and thereby there, thereby various probes were designed, okay, for various applications. For the cardiac, there was a phase direct probe. Uh, for the transvaginal examination, the endovaginal probe, and for the regional anesthesia and pain management, uh, standard uh, linear probe and a convex probe. Now, the first thing we require is an ultrasound gel. Okay? It contains carbomer, EDTTL, polypropyl, dipole, protamine, whatever the contents of the gel. The gel acts as an agent which uh, 
allows this transmission of sound produced by the transducer to go inside the body and get and when it gets reflected it also allows as a coupling mechanism to collect the sound waves back so the second thing we use is the ultrasound probe now this ultrasound probe construction inside has uh, the first thing is the acoustic lens which is in the front then we have the piezoelectric crystals piezoelectric crystals are basically chemical uh, crystals which reverberate <laughs> when an alternating current is passed through them and these are producing a definite frequency of sound which passes in their body so what happens is when a current is passed through the piezoelectric crystal from the ultrasound probe it undergoes compressive <coughs> and tensile stress and are thereby undergoing expansion and contraction now this mechanical expansion and contraction causes production of the sound waves of a particular frequency just remember this now when this frequency of sound is produced it is going inside the body and then it produces various zones of image which can be displayed on the screen so we have the near zone the near field then we have something called a focal zone so sound and light they produce a similar effect but we have to know that there are various fields near field focal zone where the best image quality can be obtained and a far field where a little uh, a lesser quality image can be obtained right so what do you mean by electronic focusing we need to know that when we keep a probe on the patient body the image optimal image which is desired by us where we are uh, going to perform the intervention has to always fall in the focal zone so various frequency like a linear transducer of 7.5 megahertz frequency will create a focal zone which is quite nearer so if you want to image object which is nearer to the skin you have to use a higher frequency probe now if you want to use a uh, ultrasound for something like a cdm ganglia probe okay so you need a, a lower frequency probe so that it can penetrate deeper and the focal zone will still be in your range sometimes uh, machines give us multiple focusing this is particularly important when you have a target area in one focal zone and another important structure in another focal zone let's say we are doing a block on the uh, brachial plexus now we have to know that the, the deeper focal zone is subclavian vessels and the near focal zone is your brachial plexus but so as to know that your needle is not transgressing the brachial plexus and going into the subclavian vessels or going deeper into the lungs you have to adjust the dual focal zone some machines give this multiple zone focusing all these are important things for optimizing the image quality now the selection of linear versus curved array probe as i told you linear array probe are high frequency probes for near field imaging the object of interest should be in the near focal zone so you use a linear probe if you want to use uh, do an intervention at a deeper level a curved probe is preferable with a lower frequency another uh, ultrasound use is for ophthalmology a mode which is not of importance to us what we use is a brightness mode we call it as brightness intensity of echo now in b mode the image is displayed when an ultrasound beam passes through the body goes through various dense density of tissues and is thus reflected back by various density of tissues and that's why this reflection of images reflection of echoes will cause a gray scale or a brightness echo in various 256 shades of gray to be precise on a monitor of ultrasound so some people the cardiologists use the m mode because the heart is a very fast moving object so to know at various levels uh, 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 what object is moving at what speed they use an m mode so this is timed with the ecg now for our purpose we are interested in the brightness mode of ultrasound now understand in this image uh, the radiologist is seeing a pseudo gestational sac now it is somewhere in the center but it is quite deeper at a cent say around 10 cm from the skin so he is using a convex probe this is one example so what we have to set on the machine parameters is already is is going to be taught to us by a technician uh, from the company like entering the patient the data then the transducer what we are using then the uh, gain now gain since we are using the brightness mode of ultrasound image if we see that the collected uh, image is a dark image then we use 
a knob on the machine to increase the gain so that we see more information. Then various maps. Now ultrasound today is basically a computerized machine with a lot of software parameters added to it. So there is a possibility that they give you various maps of imaging. So like a smooth map, a grainy map, you know, all these different maps will help you in just optimizing the image. Then the depth. Now, if you want to have a good image quality at a particular depth, you can adjust it mechanically by a depth knob. So you can go from 15 centimeters to 30 centimeters in a convex group. So that knob has to be used for adjusting the depth. Sometimes it is important that you don't really appreciate a good image quality when there are various tissue layers in one image. Let's say for example the liver, <coughs> then there is the diaphragm and that's why the tissue interference is very sharp. So sometimes you can use some a parameter of software called as image tinting just to enhance the image quality. Dynamic range compression. Now some machines with software capability, instead of you mechanically adjusting all the machine knobs, you can just press this button so that collectively all bad echoes or unwanted echoes can be cancelled out and you get a better image quality. So always remember to align the probe uh, in the proper direction, left to right or right to left as per your preference. The, this is called as the transducer orientation. So before you touch the probe on the patient body, you should understand the image which is displayed when you put the probe on the patient body, the left represents the left and the right represents the right. Never do this upward down invert because then you will lose the complete orientation. Uh, split frame imaging. In split frame imaging, what we do is, uh, the area of interest, uh, say for a particular intervention like a kidney biopsy when we do, we keep the main frame on the left hand side and the live frame on the right hand side. So you always know where you are going and where is the area uh, where you want to put the needle and in the live size you match it particularly with uh, the needle going inside the uh, kidney tissue and it should match with the left image. That is basically to know that where you are pointing to or uh, wanting to go with the needle at an intended target. Real time image. We are seeing an image at say 15 to 30 frames per second. So whatever images are displayed to us are at a speed of 30 to 40, uh, 15 to 30 frames per second. So it's a live imaging. Line density per frame. All these are technical parameters which you have to learn when you buy a machine and start doing. Frame rate, depth of view, trackball. So trackball is there on the machine which can be used for the cursor when you want to uh, label something during an intervention for documentation purpose or you want to apply a software on the machine, on the screen. <coughs> Annotation is very important. So when you do an intervention, this is the documentary evidence that you prove your point. Okay, we have this lymph node or we have this brachial plexus and now this needle is going and we are giving uh, anesthetic block at brachial plexus. Then for example, you are giving a femoral nerve block. So you document this is an artery, this is a vein and this is the nerve and your needle is going inside the sheath and you are annotating it. Annotating helps you to create a documentary evidence of your procedures. Measurements. Always do this. So whenever you are into a target organ and you feel that you need to measure these organs because there are standard variations or anomalies. So in, 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 in time, as time passes by, you should make a habit of length, area and volume measurement. Sometimes you can zoom the image, there is a button on the machine just above the trackball, so you can zoom the image. All these are things to optimize the image quality, to get the area of interest in the field of view and perform the intervention. Gain. As I said, we are seeing a real-time image which is at uh, 15 to 30 frames per second. Sometimes the image density, the tissue density doesn't give you a very bright image because it is reflected, reflected poorly or it is, you know, eco-friendly, eco-friendly tissue. So what happens? The gained information will be a little darker. So all that you have to do is turn this knob on the right hand side. This will increase the gain. So it will also enhance or it will also show you the subtly reflected echoes. So gain is a very important tool while using the machine. Uh, another machine, another tool on your machine is a time gain compensation. Time gain compensation is on the right hand side <coughs> on the top of the machine which you can use for you know, increasing the gain from the near field when you uh, uh, turn the knobs on the upper level. And if you want to increase the gain or the echoes from the lower field, then you have to turn the knob from the lower uh, 
panel. This is how time gain uh, is explained. Now, if you see an image on the first, that is on the left, this is an image of a liver. So, if you see, egos are poorly reflected from the lower part. So, what all you have to do is increase the gain so that the image reflected from the lower part will be equivalent to the image which is seen on the uppermost part. So, you see a uniform image. That is the importance of time gain compensation. Freeze and cine loop function for recording purpose. Thank you very much. Uh, all I wanted to say was uh, that before we start any using new modality, it is better to first get a know-how, technical know-how, the knowledge and the application of the machine and then start performing an intervention. Ultrasound machine is a boon for intervention pain physicians because it definitely avoids the harmful effects of radiation. Thank you very much. Thank you. No need of me expanding on whatever you have told. You can take a session full day, I think, on ultrasound. Thank you, sir. And still keep people interested in it. Uh, Dr. Murli Parwal is here. Dr. Vidyut. Dr. Vidyut is here. Vidyut Vikas Grami. Is he here? I think most of them are busy in the other ones. So, I think people are busy in different halls actually. They also have overlapping sessions. Uh, so it's my privilege. I think we can take the questions at the end of the session. So it's my privilege to invite upon Dr. Gaurav Sharma. He doesn't need my introduction. So Dr. Gaurav, please, uh, you could uh, make your presentation. Marketing and ethic, ethics of brain practice. Uh, very important. It uh, doesn't depend on your knowledge and your technical skills. A lot depends on uh, marketing skills also. How we uh, market ourselves. So I think Dr. Gaurav will also uh, give a very good insight upon marketing of pain medicine. Dr. Gaurav. Marketing and ethical pain practice. So it is one of the very important lectures which everyone has to give because on the conference usually it's a neglected part. But when you are going into the practice in day to day, you have to market yourself. You have to sell. You have to show your skills. You have to attract your patients, attract other colleagues so that they can you can get the patient load. Then only you can perform because for performing any procedures, any management, you have to get the patient. It's not only that you get the knowledge, academic skills and all these things. You have to know uh, how to market yourself, how to show your skills and how to attract the patients. That's why this is a very important lecture. So marketing. Everybody knows the patient load, the target audience, target patients, 30% of the patients in the at any time, prevalence is 30% of the general population they suffers from the chronic pain. Anywhere, musculoskeletal, migraine, cancer and all that. And many of them, they are not satisfied with the current practice. They are visiting many doctors one by one, one into another. So the pain management is currently a new specialty. Most of the people 
in the general population as well as the doctors, they are not very much aware. What are you? What is pain management like? At my places, pain management is synonymous with the physiotherapist people. At many places, they are synonymous with acupressure people. So they are the first question, what are you doing? Are you acupuncturist? Are you acupressurist? Are you physiotherapist? Are you exercise? Or it is allopathy? Or it is some more pathy? So the concept is not established into the public mind, in the public domain, or even I said in the doctors or physician community also. So it is a new specialty. The concept has to be in their mind that this is a separate specialty and this is how the methods they apply for the management. Very important may not attract sufficient patient to make enough profit to justify the investment. Whenever you get your certification or the proper training and you start, you invest a lot, but at start you have to do the marketing. Otherwise, you will not justify whatever the investment you have made to make your clinic viable. So marketing is an integral part of the whole project by which both parties become aware of the services, whether it's a patient and the doctor offered by the pain clinic. So awareness, it is a one of the main and chief integral component of the marketing, particularly for the new specialty, because every other specialty, whether the orthopedics, spine surgery, radiology, or whatever you can say, they are the well established domain in the perception of the patients and the general population. But you have the new specialty, so you have to, uh, you have to uh, put your message across loudly. So they need not be complex, but sure needs to be very thoughtful when you are planning about the strategy in the market. So promoting new services in the healthcare sector is always challenging because there are a lot of settled players and big players and experienced players are already in the market. So you have to make your own space on them. So what are the target customers? Age, disabled, the people who suffer from the incurable disease, they are the bulk of the customers. So, infrastructure and services must be customized according to them. And higher socioeconomic group of patients, they are the prime customers. So, your clinic should be able to provide the need of that higher economic group also. So, these are the three key points. You have to promote the new specialty. You have to cater the higher socioeconomic status people. You have to modify or adjust your services along with the aged and disabled and incurable disease patients' needs. So how you plan for your marketing? I divided into the four uh, main broad categories. Marketing objectives, then budget, then target, and strategies. So first, your objective should be clear. What you want to achieve. And then you have to allocate the budgets, and you then find your probable targets and then find the according strategy. It can be different from different places. It can be different in the metros. It can be different in tier two cities and tier three cities. It can be different, different for a small setup. It can be different from the corporate setup. So you have to build a strategy according to your perspectives, your facilities, and your budgets. So marketing objectives. So how to make objectives? The first objective is the most important, making public aware about the new modalities of the treatment. Making the general population understand why they need a pain clinic. All doctors are already available. And why the pain clinic is needed as much as the hospital. Then second is making doctors aware. After public, the second important aspect, doctor. Making the doctor aware of the benefits of the services of the new specialty, there is a lacuna in present clinical status, present management, there is a lacuna, a specific lacuna. So you have to highlight those points even in the doctor's fraternity so that they can refer their patients to a proper place and to get the relief. So that their referring consultant is also uh, getting fame that by the patient that his patient is getting cured by a proper techniques and proper relief. And to reach sufficient number of the patients for a smooth running of the clinic and spread the benefit of the new modalities among the general population. So public, doctors, and the patients, they, these are the three <coughs> aspects which are the main objectives for the market. Then budget allocation. I already told budget is different from the different kind of setups according to your local perspective or circumstances. 
So budget allocation is very important. All other marketing studies that depends on the budget. There are a lot of marketing strategies, but it's very important how much you can put into the market. There are different ways to reduce the budget for marketing. That are one of the important tool is social media and other similar platforms. Then another is emails, and third is attend as many conferences and seminars as possible. What are the targets? Target for marketing. Most important group, elderly patients who are from the higher socioeconomic groups, they usually suffer from the chronic musculoskeletal pain and they can give you the service, they can give you the money, which is very important. And suffers from incurable disease where pain relief is a one of the very prime aim, especially in the cancer pain palliative care. So cancer pain is a one of the very uh, neglected aspects. You can target those patients. Then suffers from the neuropathic pain and back pain and head and shoulders. Sorry? Patients of chronic pain who are unsatisfied with any other treatment. So these are the categories which are undisputed, which are not usually shared by any other communities. So rather than entangling with the confrontation with the other fraternities, you have to make your own space with it undisputed. So these categories are should be your prime target in start. Then what should be the strategies? Strategies should involve, you can say it's a 5P. 5P is you have to make your product very good, you have to sell your product. So your product quality should be, first important thing is your product quality should be of good quality. It should not be inferior. Only after then you can sell your product. Because whatever good the marketing strategies, if your product doesn't have worth it, you can't sustain for long. Short term success you can gain, but long term you can't survive. So first your product should be strong enough to sustain in the pressure of the market. Then the place. Choosing a place is very good. I'm coming one by one in all points. Then price, people and promotions. So what does product means in our pain management? Product is pain clinic and your services. So pain clinic has a good should have a good website, logo, tagline, and business cards. These all are the marketing tools. You should have a good website. Logo should be like that that it reflects your services immediately. Then you should choose a tagline because these all are the important aspect and everything is a marketing. Your message should be gone across to the second party or the other person. And business cards should be always like that. All information, all treatment modalities and all things they should be incorporated to that. The website should have all the details regarding the treatment, treatment methodology. There should be a more testimonials from the patients who got the relief, then the latest treatment options, what are the details of available facilities, and online consultation facilities in, in nowadays. It's very important. So these parts should be, I, I say it must be there in your website. And it should be updated regularly. And the profile of the consultant details should be displayed on the website. It should be clearly mentioned and highlighted in the business card and the website. So that slowly, slowly you can build upon your brand. Then only your brand should have some unique facilities so that it can be implied. Anybody says this plain clinic is, yes, it is a specialist. So it should be a specific brand and with a good service, you have to increase your brand value in your particular area or particular region. Then place, how to select a place. Best thing is that it should be in the center of the city so that everybody, the market rush, Whoever is coming to the center of the city, everybody, it, it should be in the reach of eye. It should be in the eye of the people. It should be very reachable. Transport by any methods. If patient is coming from outside, so there should not be hurdles. If it is on, on main road, it's always better. It should be easily reachable by the taxi, rickshaws, buses, trains, all modalities. There should be good reach of your place accessible mode of transport, I have told that. And if possible, it should be in the medical hub. What is medical hub? Most of the time in 
any city, there are a lot of clusters developed around, you can say, medical college or big corporate hospital or uh, there is a long diagnostic chains and consultation chamber. So advantage of setting your clinic in a medical hub that you can get cross reference easily. All the patients who are coming from the other doctors or other